Hello everybody, and welcome to the first episode of the Cypher Catalog. Today we will look into the mysterious case of John Monet Ramsey. Now only dogs will follow me. Is he following? I bite at the hand that feeds me. Slap at the face that eats me. Some kind of animal cannibal made impressions on me. Have we met before? Some strange department store We won't see him anymore Born August 6, 1990, John Bonnet Ramsey was an American child beauty queen who won a landslide of pageants in her time, such as America's Royal Miss and National Tiny Miss Beauty. However, these accomplishments would be overshadowed by her sudden and untimely death in 1996. The location puts us in Boulder, Colorado within her family home on December 26, 1996. That is two days before my birthday. <laughs> Whoa. Um, can I get my... <laughs> Where a rather long and confusing handwritten ransom note was found. I so, thought the ransom was racist. <laughs> Alright. And they're not kidding when they say this is like a ridiculous ransom note. It's like the longest fucking ransom note. I've ever seen. And you guys will see why I find it so fucking weird in a little bit, because it really is as ridiculous as they make it sound. I think you put an extra ass in business. Where? The oh, no, I didn't write this. I just copied and pasted it from the direct thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ramsey, listen carefully. We are a group of individuals that represent a small foreign faction. We do respect your business but not the country that it serves. At this time, we have your daughter in our possession. She is safe and unharmed, and if you want her to see 1997, you must follow our instructions to the letter. You will withdraw 118,000 from your account. I don't know if I said that number right. Oopsie. 100,000 will be in $100 bills, and the remaining 18,000 in 20 bills. Make sure that you bring an adequate size attached to your bank. When you get home, you will put the money in a brown paper bag. I will call you between 8 and 10 a.m. tomorrow to instruct you on delivery. The delivery will be exhausting, so I advise you be well rested. If we monitor you getting the money early, we might call you early to arrange an earlier delivery of the money and hence a earlier delivery pickup <laughs> of your daughter. Why do they make it sound like a food pickup? It, I know, I think that's the funniest part. Look how, okay, it's, it's really long. I'm still going. Any deviation, I think it's like three pages long, actually. Oh, jeez. Any deviation of my instructions will result in the immediate execution of your daughter. You will also be denied her remains for proper burial. The, gen the two gentlemen watching over your daughter do not particularly like you, so I advise you do not provoke them. Speaking to anyone about your situation, such as police, FBI, etc., will result in your daughter being beheaded. If we catch you talking to a stray dog, she dies. If you alert bank authorities, she dies. If the money is in any way marked or tampered with, she dies. You will be scanned for electronic devices, and if any are found, she dies. You can try to deceive us, but be warned that we are familiar with law enforcement countermeasures and tactics. You stand a 99% chance of killing your daughter if you try to outsmart us. Follow our instructions and you stand a 100% chance of getting her back. That's like a really oddly specific thing for them to put in there. They're just supposed to put down the money and be like, come get your fucking kid. <laughs> What's a stray dog supposed to do with that information? I don't know, they're rambling. <laughs> if you talk to the ants in your living room floor, she's dead. She's dead. I'll fucking shoot her. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bo was saying, what about the 1%? It's like a Walmart pickup order. <laughs> you and your family are under constant scrutiny as well as the authorities. Don't try to grow a brain, John. You are not the only fat cat around, so don't think that killing will be difficult. Don't underestimate us, John. I, think, I can only think of fucking Garfield, I'll be real with you. Use <laughs> that good southern common sense of yours. It is all up to you now, John. Victory. SBTC. 
Despite the yeah, note God. specifically stating to not call authorities, Mother Patsy contacted the police, as well as family and friends, at 5.52 a.m. Within three minutes, police were on scene and concluded that there had been no forced entry. John Bonet was not found during the initial search. With her still missing, her father began to prepare the ransom. Meanwhile, a forensics team was sent to the scene and came to the original conclusion that it was a kidnapping. And as such, the girl's bedroom was the only room in the entire house to be sanctioned off. Which I find to be really weird. I feel like the rest of the house should have also been taken into account. Yeah. Visitors were allowed to... Visitors were allowed into the house still, where they cleaned surfaces such as kitchen counters. Potentially- <laughs> It's Quandale Dingle here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, French bread! Hi. <laughs> this is unexpected, but a development I respect. Me and yeah. Bo were on the same page thinking of Garfield. And then, let's see here. Yeah, they cleaned off surfaces such as kitchen counters, potentially destroying evidence. Why would you clean off any surfaces regarding a missing child's case? <laughs> it's either her parents are, like, really stupid, or they're just really stupid. <laughs> or they're just really stupid. Because either way, if it was, like, their fault, and, like, they were... My guess, my guess is just, they're, they're just stupid. <laughs> they're just yeah. stupid. I think that is the case, because not only did the parents let them in, but the police and stuff on scene allowed them to come in. They only sanctioned off this kid's bedroom. Yeah. Furthermore, I don't it should even be noted, know what you're talking about, but like, I'm just like, what? We're talking about the case of John Bonet Ramsey. I don't know who that is. Little girl pageant queen who died in her own John? home. Her name was John. She was named after her dad. Who named their child girl John? <laughs> what the heck? I'm, I feel so bad for her. <laughs> yeah, let's ignore the fact that she got brutally murdered in her own home. Let's <laughs> John? Her name John? Is John? <laughs> Furthermore, oh my god, English so bad. Furthermore, it should be noted that there was never any attempt to collect the ransom money. Which is just like a really weird thing. Like, why are you going to leave this whole ransom note, which, by the way, was like three pages long, if I haven't said all that already, and just be like, by the way, we're not even going to contact you about that damn money. At 1 p.m., another search was conducted within the home by Detective Arndt. I don't know how to say that. Arndt? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> John Ramsey and Fleet White. Keep in mind, John Ramsey is the father where John first checked the basement and found John Bonet Ramsey dead on the floor. So the first place this man checks, the, she just find, finds the body. She, she's dead. He's like, oh, immediately finds her. Nylon cord was tied around her wrist and neck and a white blanket covering her torso. Her mouth was covered with duct tape. John then picked her up and brought her upstairs, disturbing and contaminating the scene. Hmm... <laughs> Her official cause of death is listed as asphyxia by strangulation associated with, I practiced this so it shouldn't be difficult for me to say, craniocerebral, I still fucked it up, trauma, oh. essentially strangulation and a skull fracture. There was no semen found and no evidence of conventional rape, but any form of sexual assault could not be ruled out. I have something. Yes, what's up? It says in the letter that they were going to behead her, but they just, like, choked her. Yeah, they were just like, oh, fuck. They called the police, like, three minutes after I said not to! <laughs> wow, I don't even have the knife with me! I'm, I'm, just, I'm not prepared! And they're just chilling in the basement. They haven't even left the damn premise. They're just like, let's just choke this bitch out! Her yeah. death was eventually ruled a homicide, for obvious reasons. <laughs> the weapon used to strangle her was made out of the nylon cord and the broken handle of a paintbrush. The brush end was found in Patsy's art supplies. Patsy is her mother. However, oh a third of the paintbrush would never be recovered. Okay. What? <laughs> Wait. Let's see what Bo has to say. <laughs> you say homicide and not homicide? Oh, is there homicide? Home. Am I'm I saying sure, it wrong? I'm pretty sure it's homicide. Homicide. 
Homicide, homicide, homicide. Fuck. <laughs> but like, but how how do like these people get around all around their house to gather all this stuff without the parents knowing? That's what I'm saying. And guys, keep in mind, it gets more weird. It gets it's, it's more and more weird as we continue. No way. It does. Pineapple no was way. found. No way. I didn't in- believe that. <laughs> I can't believe my eyes. Pineapple was found in the girl's stomach a few hours prior to her death. Images taken of the house on the day of her discovery show a bowl of pineapple on the kitchen table with a spoon in it. The fingerprints of her older brother, nine-year-old Burke Ramsey, were found on the bowl. But her parents maintained the idea that Burke slept the entire night up until several hours after the police arrived. So, So, what does that have to do with anything? She that ate means- some pineapple, went to sleep, and then she ate some more pineapple, and then died? <laughs> we don't know if- <laughs> Basically, but we don't know if they were there at the same time. We don't know if the brother gave her the pineapple and therefore was the last person to see her alive. Hmm. So, however, the parents denied anything. And, you know, I feel like asking for a statement from the damn kid what happened would, would be a great idea, but I couldn't find much on that. Wow. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about the dead one. I was like, oh, I don't think that'll work out very well. <laughs> Sorry, John like, Bidet. Did you eat the like, pineapple? Uh, a Ouija board, Ouija board, Ouija board, a Luigi board. Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna summon Linguini to chat. <laughs> oh my god. Pineapple was. Oh, I already said the pineapple thing. Anyway. John <laughs> DNA on John Bonet's underwear belonged to up to two unknown persons, which were not John Bonet. Additional traces huh? of male DNA were found in other objects, such as the rope and paintbrush, resulting in six separate DNA samples belonging to unknown individuals. These six samples continue to show up on different surfaces throughout the investigation. However, I'd like to add that these could have gotten there throughout. Ooh, um, throughout various other means, and it doesn't necessarily mean the murder was done by a stranger. I thought of it like a theory. Like, I don't know. I feel like there just can't be a murderer in your house grabbing all these stuffs from around the house without the parents knowing. So I thought, like, what if one of them just hired some people to do it? That? I actually haven't thought of that. That's possible. Yeah, I don't know why I know. I, I'll be real with you. Okay, well, you know, we'll talk about that later when we get to the theory section, but <laughs> I have not heard that one yet, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but the thing is, I wanted to point out that it could have gotten there through other means because I did read another ca- cold case where they traced back DNA and it was just to the factory worker who was producing the damn underwear. <laughs> Bruh. Oh. <laughs> so, I don't know if this is what's happening again. It would explain why there's no case file of any of the people found, but I just wanted to point that out. During the investigation, a detective named Lou Smith presented his findings where he concluded that the murder wasn't done by the Ramseys, but they weren't able to change the police department's belief that the Ramseys were guilty. In 1999, the grand jury returned a true bill to charge the Ramseys with putting a child at risk and obstructing the investigation of her murder. I also would like to point out that the Ramseys were not like, I don't know how to word this, they were not I don't, what's the, I don't know. They weren't agreeing with police immediately to go look and stuff. They were kind of reluctant. They say it was because they were nervous that they would become immediate suspects, but I feel like if you're not going to assist in the murder of your child, you make yourself look more guilty. If you're worried about being a suspect of killing your own child, um... Probably so a good idea to give a shit. <laughs> I feel like a good sh- a good parent would be like, heck yeah, I'll help with the investigation. Yeah, like, where is... Where is- It'll make you more shady if you're like, no, I don't want to do that because I don't want to be a suspect. <laughs> yeah, Bo had the Bo had the words. They were not yeah, cooperating really, with police. A really not guilty person would probably not worry if they're guilty or not. Exactly. <laughs> or worry that if they seem guilty... Exactly. If you did nothing wrong, then you did nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. So let's see where was I. Um, they didn't end up getting charged for these things, and as a result of newly developed DNA testing and sampling, the Ramsey family members were excluded as suspects, leaving John Bonnet Ramsey's case unsolved. So let's get into theories. There are two notable ones. 
The first one being the family member theory. Police saw no sign of forced entry, but they did find evidence of the scene possibly being staged. The ransom note's handwriting was deemed similar to Mother Patsy's. So here, I actually have an image here for you guys. This right here is the comparison between Patsy's left-hand sample and the original ransom note. Huh. Hmm. So... Do you guys see all the similarities? Yeah. So... The handwriting was deemed similar to Mother Patsy's, although that on its own isn't conclusive, the draft for the ransom note was found within the home! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bruh. This is because the pen and paper used for the ransom note belonged to the Ramses. This thing was written in the damn house. Oh my god. Which means that they came into the house, knew where to get all of these supplies, and wrote the note before kidnapping this kid. Or maybe they, they did it there. right after. They sat there in the house, just like, what did you do? I'm writing it down. And they even had a, like... A draft copy. Can you imagine Bruh. being that ballsy that they were like, fuck, it's not good enough, and throwing it away? <laughs> well, damn. It, it doesn't feel like it's scary enough. I need to like, get it through their heads. Um, Treat them like Garfield. Oh man. oh, man, I messed up. Gotta gotta start again. And oh, they no, threw I'm it away gonna... in the house that they're kidnapping the kid from. They're not even gonna take it away with them, they're just gonna throw it away. Yeah. John Ramsey pointed out the amount demanded of him in the note was nearly identical to the Christmas bonus from the, he had from the previous year. A board-certified forensic patho pathologist who had looked at both sides of the case said he had never seen a note like this within his 60 years of experience, stating that he didn't think it was written by an outsider or Wait. a stranger to the family. How? What? And who, like, looks at a ransom and is like, oh, yeah, that's, like, my Christmas bonus from last year. <laughs> that's actually a really valid point. He just saw the number on the ransom note and was like, what the fuck? Like, this is my Christmas bonus. <laughs> I feel like they could... It I feels like a... I don't know if it's gonna make any sense. It feels like a red herring. It feels like something put in there to throw people off. Yeah. Maybe. Looking at timestamps, it is heavily suggested that John Bonet was dead even before the ransom note had been written. Which raises so then, heavy questions on what the fuck was the point? <laughs> what, what was the point of saying that you're gonna behead her when she was already dead? What was the point of this three page long ransom note saying, It's all up to you, John? She's already yeah, dead in the basement. It's up to you, John, to save. Save John. <laughs> the Johnning. Ooh, I, I thought of something else. Yeah, what's up? Like, it's mostly targeted towards John, and all of, like, the evidence goes to the mom. That's what I was thinking. But the thing Maybe is she just really hates him. Yeah. When I originally read this case, like, a while ago, I thought it was the dad at first, but then I looked further into it, and I think that the dad might actually be the only one who literally had no fucking idea what was happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, let's continue this. Some people believe that Patsy murdered John Bonet Ramsey, but Burke Ramsey claims that both of them had never been spanked or harmed by their parents, let alone um, murdered, you know? I forgot let to... alone all murdered. <laughs> I forgot to write down the word, so I paused and I was like, oopsie. <laughs> First, there's the fact that John Ramsey found the body immediately after starting his own search, and some even believe Burke accidentally killed his sister when she stole a piece of pineapple from him. <laughs> 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 Which is, like, a level of petty. Oh, you stole my pineapple! Oh, oh you God. Kill your sister? Okay. <laughs> kick this kid down some stairs, she stole my fucking pineapple. But, like, that's some strength for, like, a little boy to have. However, to I would like to, um... Here, after this, I have this link for us. So you guys know I'm sharing my screen. It says, 20 years after her murder, Burke broke his silence on it, and viewers mentioned his unusually happy demeanor when speaking on the matter. So, oh. I have it here, and I know that there's a part where, apparently, he 
like this is describing how her body was in the casket and he's smiling during it i don't know wh- where it is wait burke was the brother burke was the brother i don't know where is i don't know if he's in here but point being i can read the comments here because let's see here Gail Ash, six months ago, states, This young man is the creepiest person I've ever seen. He seems almost joyful to talk about it. What the heck went on in that house to leave one child dead and the other this shady? Not saying he did it, but he's just got a weird way of expressing his sorrow. Yeah, weird way of coping, man. Smiling and laughing. And a man named, or woman, a person named Joko, three months ago, said smiling and laughing while talking about the way her body looked in the casket. Something ain't right with this guy or the whole situation. Family definitely did it. Thank you for your input, Joko. Yeah. I don't know what tab I just closed. It probably was the other one. Okay, anyway. Next up, we have the intruder theory. Unidentified boot marks were left in the basement where John Bonet was found, leading investigators to begin pursuing the idea that it wasn't an inside job by the Ramses. Persons of interest in, um, early in the case involved neighbor Bill McReynolds, who played Santa Claus, which was a weird detail they put in there, but I guess she took pictures Wait, who with played what? Santa Claus. Apparently, I guess this guy took Santa Claus photos with, with her. When I she- don't know. I, I feel like it would have like tied into like the dad talking about a Christmas thing. Actually, now that you point that out, I didn't think of that correlation. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he was talking about a Christmas thing? Like the what? Christmas bonus from before being tied to the oh, ransom. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Is what if what if the family is trying to like throw Bill McReynolds under the bus? Keep in mind Dude, I just thought of like the most the funniest thing ever. <laughs> Imagine we were like detectives and this is how we were actually trying to solve a case. We're like Oh my god, what if? <laughs> Actually, that is kind of what the series is about. We're trying to crack it through really weird theories and trying to, like, think about it. I was like, like wait, why would he talk about his Christmas bonus? Well, it's actually a good thing to bring up. Like, oh, damn, my kid's dead. Is that my Christmas bonus from last year? Oh yeah. my god. That's yeah, so- especially because it's from a year ago. Like, what the heck, man? What are you doing? Former she family housekeeper. Good memory. Uh, another person of interest was former family housekeeper Linda Hoffman Pug, and a man named Michael Helgoth, who died in an apparent suicide shortly after John Bonet's death. Although clearly these accusations fell short, as DNA evidence was was not found. Otherwise, this case probably would be solved by now. And if there was DNA evidence found from any of these guys, why wasn't it? Why wasn't it brought further? So, um, there's that. Some oh, people. So- oh yeah, what's it up? It left my brain. I'm trying to think of it again. Oh, some yeah. believe that her pageant experience may have attracted the attention of child pornographers and pedophiles in the area. Although yeah. it would ha- have to be someone who got into the Ramsey home without forced entry. False confessions have come forward of people claiming to have killed the child, but because they have no respect for them trying to take credit for her death. They will remain unnamed in this video because they were proven to be false. And why are you trying to take responsibility for this little girl's brutal death? I don't want to hear it. Unless, unless someone hired them to do it. Well, the thing is, one of them was like a... Okay, they're going to make the rest of us all look bad. But they were in the LGBT community. They were transgender solely for the fact that they could get closer to little girls. Oh. Yeah. So that's definitely not fun. Um, oh. Wait, who was the the person who came forward claiming to have killed her? Ah. Huh. And recently, um, and I'm okay. talking about like a day prior to me writing this. I'm talking like yesterday. The father of John Bonet Ramsey came out at Crime Con. Also, why is there a crime convention that he's attending? <laughs> Who knows? And he's he went there to, to talk about how he's starting a petition to reopen and find the killer. So, first of all, theories. What do you guys think happened? Okay, I wasn't here for the full thing. You got most uh, of it, though. Yeah. I don't know. The mom seems, like, awfully quiet about it. Like, the dad, he's like, Oh, I want to reopen the case. 
<laughs> justice for my- Wait, when did the crime happen? It happened... What's the year? Oh my god, I don't... It happened December 26th or 25th, 1996. Whoa. Like, that was a long-ass time. And I'll be real with you, if the dad was the murderer, I highly doubt he would be trying to, you know, reopen the case. Unless, of yeah. course, as, as Chloe stated, where he hired somebody else and now thinks it probably... Because I bet, like, you know, people suspecting you of your child's murder might ruin some job op job opportunities for you. You know, shit like that. So mm -hmm. maybe trying to get the person you hired found might, you know... But then again, if the person gets caught, they can just be like, that motherfucker hired me. But, like, I mean, but that doesn't make the murderer any less guilty. Exactly. But still, but he would probably get arrested too. I mean, I sure as hell hope so. Yeah. But, like, in the I'm letter. Gonna teach myself how to crochet, sorry. Oh my god. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I love crocheting. I don't do it, but. <laughs> but, anyways, sorry. <laughs> Um, in the letter, it said, like, the two gentlemen that were watching over John Binet didn't like the the father. No, it said they didn't, they didn't like her, I think. Maybe, um... No, I someone, thought... It, here, I'll, I'll scroll up. It's maybe someone, like, close to the father or something doesn't really did not like his child or really did not like oh, him. Oh, yeah, they don't And tried like to, like, get revenge on him by killing his daughter. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know. Maybe Both like his that boss. Totally okay, wait. Maybe it was his boss daily. who knows who knows what his daily his Christmas bonus was. True. But has been to his house before so he knows where the pen and paper is. But this guy also knew where Patsy's art supplies were. <coughs> no. Patsy. Oh my god. Patsy's having an affair. Oh my god. This is <laughs> So Bo thinks that um, she was definitely killed by the family. Now, here's actually what I'm thinking, because I used to think that the dad was guilty of it. However, I'm pretty sure that he might be the only one in this case that genuinely has no idea what happened. So, oh, I remembered what I was going to say. Yeah? It was like, I thought like um, the rest of the family didn't seem like that phased over like the death of their daughter and sister. Yeah, what if it was both the brother and the mother? Um, because keep in, look in the, if you look at the, um, the group of individuals that represent the small force <laughs> faction, it's so wordy, and keep in mind, it never mentions his, her mother or her brother. It's just John. It's just John. It's just making fun of John. It's like, mm -hmm. John, don't ask your rich tomatoes. I hate you. I mean, I'm like, just the way that, like, they were talking about how um, the brother was, like, smiling when talking about her dad. I've seen, like, a murderer talk about the way he killed someone, and, like, that seems like how a murderer would talk about how they killed someone. Yeah, some people say that it's just, like, Oh, it's been so many years, she's over it. But I don't think you still smile at it. Yeah, if you're Especially over it, on that live TV. Means that you're like <laughs> if you're if you're over it, that just means that you're like not like sad about it, but you're not like <laughs> Yeah, my sister died. <laughs> she's fucking dead, bro. But here's the thing. So throughout the throughout the case, I noticed that the brother and the mother continuously back each other up. So, of course, there's both parents saying that he must have slept through the night, right? But there also was that bowl of fucking pineapple, which is, like, that was, like, a few hours right before her death. Yeah. So, I, look, my, I'm just saying, I wouldn't be surprised if Burke did if accidentally kill his sister and then proceeded to have his mother help cover it up. Yeah. Because yeah. Here, where was it? Because Burke also said when like when her mo when his, um his mother was questioned, she he was like, "No, we never got like any. Nobody ever hurt us. Nobody ever hit us or anything like that." Which I mean, if it's true, then yeah, go ahead and say that. But if you're bleeding into the fact that literally nobody here can be ruled off, I don't know. It could also be seen as covering up for your own crime. Yeah. I also. I also thought about, like, recently, the dad came out about, like, wanting to reopen the case, 
But like it was it was just about him wanting to do it, not about the rest of the family. I think the it. mom is dead actually. Oh. Oh. Well, well, well but 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 the bro- but the brother. Yeah, she died in 2006. But like but the brother though, he's still alive. Yeah. She died at age 49 of ovarian cancer. Hmm. Damn. Dang. She's Can't can't pretty. question her now. I mean, so, if she was the murderer, uh, she's not pretty. But if she wasn't the murderer, she's kind of pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they were they were beauty pageants, be- beauty pageant queens. Oh, uh, uh, makes sense. Here, like, hold on. John Bonet Ramsey was actually a really like, she's really cute. Look at her. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Look at her go, girl bossing. However, I will say. <laughs> Then Is I- that a comparison between her and Katy Perry? Excuse me? <laughs> Where <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> oh my god! It is! <laughs> Where? Look up, like, right under the Google. Oh my god! <laughs> Katy Perry is John Bonet Ramsey. Where is this theory coming from? Why are they deciding that they're the same person? They found her dead body! <laughs> are they even the same age? I don't know. What if it? What if I, I would doubt it. She didn't actually die, but this is just a cover up because Katy Perry is actually a member of the government. Oh my god! This is so Illuminati. <laughs> She's a member of the Illuminati. Guys. <laughs> oh my god! It's all coming full circle. It really is. But I really do find that so fucking weird. That like all of it is like people have no idea what happened to the point that they are denying this girl's murder. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They found her body. I don't think anybody would benefit from killing their own daughter. Like, especially yeah. when they are... They're a pageant queen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're, this kid isn't even... They're six years old. The fuck are you gonna get from that? Who knows? So, I think that, well, let's come to a conclusion here then. I personally think that it had something to do with either the brother um, and the mother, and maybe they hired some people, and that's how all that DNA got there, as well as the boot marks and all the other and soft things. But keep in mind, there was no sign of forced entry, so either the, if it was somebody outside of the house, they must have had keys. They must have had a proper way in. However, I think that it said that one of the doors was left fucking unlocked. Oh my god. What what I want to mention is, like, right after they read the letter about not calling authorities, the mom called the authorities anyways. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Why would you do that if... I... I I'm not sure. Because, like, I guess it makes sense to, like, immediately call the police. But also... It, they did specifically say in their over the lengthy handwritten note from their own house to uh tr- was, don't overthink us would... don't underestimate us John <laughs> you wouldn't call the police if your child's gonna die if you do unless there was no point in like keeping your daughter alive if she was dead already <laughs> Although, I feel like they, maybe there's a possibility they did it because they would have gotten in trouble had they not called the police. It's like one of those weird loophole things. I'm not sure what I would have done in that situation. Other than maybe not murder my own child. <laughs> um, so, of course, mm. although I've gone over all of this, if any information, if any of my information is incorrect, please comment down below as well as add on any other details I may have missed. The tragic death of John Bennett Ramsey might not always remain unsolved. So, the, so it begs the question. What do you think happened? Bit of this. So, they never found out what SBTC is, but when I was really obsessed with the case, I tried looking in for it myself, and the only thing um, I could find was the Bible quote that was, like, saved by the cross. Hmm. So, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but I'm pretty sure that there... Okay, this is me reaching 100%, but there was, like, 
I, I forget. Hold on. Let me look this up. I, I, I misspelled cross. It says, For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are dying, but to us who are saved, it is the power of God. 